Hi there. Uh, my name is Chris Newman. Uh, I'm a worldwide solution architect from Symantec. I do apologize that I do not speak Hungarian. Uh, so. English will have to be. Uh, the purpose of this is to talk about uh, basically event standards. Uh, it's anyone who's interested in either already has a security operations center or is interested in building it or threat hunting or kind of a, a bunch of kind of security use cases is used to dealing with a lot of different types of data. And I want to talk about standardizing that. So just a little bit of background. Historically, organizations would collect uh, very small sets of data from pretty standard things. Uh, we're talking about things like, I don't know, firewalls, endpoints, uh, Windows events, maybe. Maybe just from the domain controllers, authentication logs. Uh, very basic, kind of uh, low forensic value log sources, right? And typically, the operations team was, was essentially supplying that to the security team, that the security team would have to request it, maybe they'd get access to it in the UI for whatever the, that particular product is, but they basically, they were, they were depending on others to essentially supply them those logs. And you know, the logs would usually have an operations focus, so they, they would not have an explicit security type focus, um, and they were oftentimes kind of siloed. So you know, each product would essentially have the events in essentially the UI that they came from. Um, and it, but that's, that started to change, that over the last probably five years, uh, with the advent of Sims, essentially people are starting to uh, basically enforce that they collect logs from all sorts of different things and send them into a single place. If you're building a security operations center, that's kind of the first thing you do. And, and when I was actually doing incident response, when we would show up to an organization that had a breach or anything like that, the very first thing we would do is get all the logs from everything and put it into one place. That's the very first thing you do. And, and that's true now just as much as it was you know, two years ago, five years ago. So what, what we're seeing on a, on a global level is a lot of organizations are basically saying that as a security team, they're gonna enforce that they basically collect events from everything, right? That, that, that's a, a basic thing that a security team is, is, if there is a separate security team, can enforce. However, in most cases, they're not being very intelligent about it. The, what they're doing is, is they're, they're using whatever tools they have in place, and they're just grabbing a ton, of, a ton of data and trying to shove it into some sort of tool. It could be a SIM, it could be a threat intelligence platform, it could be a UBA, it could be a custom tool whatever it is, or a lot of different tools. And I, you know, I'm seeing this at banks, at governments, you know, any large organizations, everywhere. And it, the biggest problem is, so you have, you have a couple basic problems with that. So the first thing is that it's expensive, that it, it costs a lot of money and a lot of time to basically do it and maintain it. That what you end up doing is building a bunch of one-to-one -one relationships between every single one of these products and whatever tooling that you're sending it to. So that means that you have a team of individuals who's basically, or you're paying for services or a managed service provider, but basically you have a team that has to monitor and maintain and constantly tune that up every single time you add a new product or change versions or whatever it is. That's, that's expensive and it's a, it's a long-term cost. It's, it's something that you do year after year after year. Uh, but the other big thing is that it just produces noise. That the, the number of, of companies that have been breached and had actual events that told them that, but they didn't know it, is immense. That almost all of the big breaches in the last few years or any of these other incidents, they had, that, they had an event that said that happened. They just didn't know it because they couldn't see it amidst all that noise. They're sending everything and it's sitting there and they could search it, but the, there's nothing that's, that's intelligently calling out what, what, when they actually have a problem and when they need to do something. They're just overwhelmed. So, you know, the, the, the joke I would make is, you know, if a, a tree falls in the forest and, and no one sees it, you've been breached, right? That, that it doesn't matter if you collect the data and don't do anything and don't, don't get alerted on it. So, you know, the, there's a few problems with basically what the kinds of data sets and the kinds of tools that we're using right now. So the, the first thing is, is that the data sets themselves, they don't match. And typically, the best way to actually call out an incident is to have multiple sources of information that all point to the same thing. You need to put things like endpoints and authentication logs and firewall and proxy and all these other things, you need to put them together. 
And, and it, sometimes it takes more than one thing to actually make a correlation between that, that actually says here is a problem. Um, the other thing is, is that as, as you're sitting there, and I, I know customers that are sending billions of events a day because they collect from everywhere. And that's incredibly difficult to deal with. Petabyte type storage arrays and, and data sets are, are a pain. Um, and if you have these kind of different types of data all together, you can't necessarily search all of them at the same time. Um, but the, the biggest thing is the one that I talked about, which is the noise problem. It's how do I find something that I, is, is actually actionable and how do I respond to it? So the, the, the first thing that you really need to do in order to, settle, like to start solving this is actually to start walking down the different types. And the, the biggest problem we have in this industry right now when it comes to events is there's no standards. There's no standards at all. And I, and I think some of the, the tool vendors actually are, are starting to become aware of this because it makes their products not very useful. That if I'm a sim vendor, you know, that, that's the first thing that I have to do is, is help them with this, this kind of all these different data sets, all these different types of technologies, all producing this, this noisy data. And, and the big thing is, is that there's no real standards for event types. So what that means is, like, a, a good example would be something like a, a file detection. So you could get a file detection on a variety of different types of equipment, right? You could get a file detection on an endpoint thing, you could get it on a cloud thing, a firewall, uh, all sorts of different tools will actually generate a file detection. But there's no, no single standard for what, what that event would look like, even though that would be interesting across any of those different products, right? And the same thing goes for the data types. The things have a habit of storing things in different ways, which makes searching and, and kind of dealing with that data actually very difficult. Um, and it, but the other thing that the, I think is, is really missing amidst all of these is standards for severity. And what that means is, is being, you know, calling out explicitly, this is a major, this is an informational. This, you know, basically saying that, that giving a score essentially to that event. Because that's, that's what helps point you in the right direction of this is something I might need to deal with. And that's, that's typically associated with what action was taken um, and you know, where it came from and that kind of context. And a, and a single point of solution isn't necessarily going to be good at calling, you, calling that out. And even if they are, because there's no standard, that won't match with another solution. Right? Um, and then, but the last one is, is around actions. Like that there's, there's no real standards around what does a security action actually look like? Um, though there's, there's a couple organizations that are working on it, including a, a OASIS standard called OpenC2. So the, the analytics platforms know this is a problem, um, and some of them actually started working on that. I can give you a couple examples. Uh, Splunk would be actually be one where they're, they're working on something called the common information model. Um, but intrinsically, the downstream tools, when they do solve those problems, they do it on a one-to-one -one basis. Which, which kind of makes them kind of the wrong place to do it because they're just going to keep doing that and keep doing that while the things that are actually producing this data, the security vendors, the network vendors, the operating system vendors, all of those other organizations basically are just kind of continuing to produce the data the same way they've always done it. All right? And it, the last part is, is really around that actions. It's, okay, I have actually found something because I, I, I can find it amidst all this noise. What do I do now? And Semantic is just as responsible for this, if probably not worse than anyone. Um, the, as a vendor, what we do is we make an API, and we assume that that's good enough for orchestration. And the problem is that every single product has its own API, and its own, you know, basically language for doing these orchestrated actions. And, and we assume that we're solving your problem, but it's not like you only have one product. How many products do you have? And where are your users? Are they sitting in your network? Are they sitting in a coffee shop? Are they sitting at home? Are they managed devices at all? You know, like, are we talking cloud, on-prem? Where, where is it, right? And so you can't sit there and try and deal with 500 different APIs just to do some basic security actions, right? It makes it, makes it slow to respond, in which case, at a certain point, why bother? So what are we doing about this? Um, so. What we're looking to do is we're, we're releasing a product called ICDX. It's a free tool. Um, and the idea is that it's essentially it's something to make it easier to live with us. Um, but we hope that this actually becomes a, kind of something bigger, that we're going to be publishing it, we'll be standardizing it, um, you know, and basically offering it for anyone, essentially. 
Uh, but th there's four basic things that it's looking to do. So the first one is I want to basically be able to interact with all things semantic once, okay? Like one integration for all the different things that we make. It's solving the data structure problem. We put severity, we put what happened, and we output basically JSON, um, which means that, that just about anything can actually parse it. And we'll standardize that. So there's a schema, there's a set dictionary, there is one output, whether it's a web proxy, a SAS solution, or an endpoint. Um, and we'll also, be, just because we're being pragmatic, because we're already doing this for you, we'll let you put it, send it off in different directions, we'll let you carve at it, cut, cut it up, remove columns for GDPR reasons or PCI reasons, um, basically let you mix and match with the data and be able to send it to as many destinations as you'd like. And then the last thing is a single API using a set security standard, which is OpenC2. Um, and you can look this up at openc2.org. So thank you for your time. Uh, if you have questions, uh, the Semantic Hungarian team is sitting at our booth, and I appreciate your time. Thank you very much.